I'm Jordan Rayner, and this is the Word Before Work. Today we're reading from Philippians 3, 18 through 20. Here's what it says. For as I have often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, that was Paul speaking in Philippians 3, 18 through 20. The parallels between C.S. Lewis and John F. Kennedy are eerie, to say the least, Both men were Irish. Both went by the nickname Jack. Both were war veterans, but ultimately gained fame through their writing and speaking. And both men died on November 22nd, 1963, within one hour of each other. From that point forward, their paths diverged considerably. Kennedy's death dominated the front page of every major newspaper on earth, While in most newspapers, Lewis's death wasn't even mentioned. While more than 800,000 people lined the streets to watch Kennedy's funeral procession, there was no procession at all for Lewis, his funeral attended by a handful of close friends. But today, nearly 60 years after these two men passed, JFK's legacy has steadily diminished, while Lewis's continues to grow. The New York Times recently called Lewis an evangelical rock star, while Time Magazine named him the hottest theologian of the year 42 years after his death. Comparing the legacies of Kennedy and Lewis, The Atlantic Magazine was forced to admit that, quote, Lewis's ideas claim the most lasting influence, end quote. Why such a stark contrast in the acclaim these men received immediately after death and decades afterward? There are many answers to that question. I'll just offer one. While Jack Kennedy appears to have lived his life in an effort to build his own kingdom, the kingdom of Camelot, Jack Lewis lived his life for something that will outlive every single one of us, the eternal kingdom of God. As we've seen in this short series, Lewis wrote and lived parables that pointed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. He worked as a living sacrifice, giving up his time and considerable amounts of money for the good of others. He viewed himself as a small, dirty object and spent his life in service to others rather than his own ego. Why did Lewis work in these ways? Because Lewis knew that ultimately his citizenship is in heaven. Believer, if like Kennedy, you work for your fame, your agenda, and your kingdom, your work will soon be forgotten after you're gone. But if like Lewis, you work for Christ's fame, his agenda, and his kingdom, you can know that your work is not in vain. See 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Even if nobody in this life remembers your work, you can take it to the bank that God will never, ever forget it. See Hebrews 6.10. My friends, this life is a rounding error in the context of eternity. Don't fight to save it. Like Lewis, spend it in service to the true and better Aslan. Today's devotional only scratches the surface of how God's word connects to our work. If you want to go deeper, sign up for my free 20-day devotional called The Word Before Work Foundations at twbwfoundations.com. These email devotionals are designed to help you gain a rich understanding of the biblical narrative of work, how exactly your work matters for eternity, and what those truths mean for how we ought to work today. Sign up right now, again, totally free at twbwfoundations.com.